Hi everyone, it's Jane here for Wow Embossing Powders. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be sharing with you a technique for using embossing powders with embossing folders. And today I'm going to be using this Alter New Organic Stones 3D embossing folder. This will work just as well with regular embossing folders. It doesn't have to be a 3D embossing folder, just whatever you've got in your stash. So I'm just taking my WOW embossing ink pad and I'm really lightly swiping it over the surface of the embossing folder. It's up to you whether you decide to emboss the embossed side or the debossed side. So the side that has the pattern protruding or the indent essentially. Today I have started off by inking up the embossed, i.e. the protruding side. And this just means that the embossing ink that I've put on the folder will get pressed down into those indents. So I'm just going to grab some scrap paper here and I'm just going to show you here that this is the side where there was no embossing ink. And then if you turn it over where the embossing ink has gone down into the indents and you can see how well the embossing powder sticks in there. So I'm just going to continue to apply my embossing powder to the whole of this background. The trio that I'm using today is from Alex Siberia Designs and it's three really lovely spring colours. And to be honest, the first thing that I thought when I saw the colours was to do something floral. Because they are such lovely spring colours, that's the first thing that springs to mind. But I'm glad that I actually push myself outside of my usual comfort zone with these types of colours and went for something completely different. So in between each colour I'm just tapping the excess off onto some scrap paper and I'm popping the rest back into my jar. And I'm just coming to the final colour now which is the sunlit gleam and one thing that I would always remind you to do with your embossing powders is to give them a little shake before you apply them because some of the embossing powders are made up of different elements so you can see with this one here as well as the yellow powder it's got the little white bits in as well so you want to make sure that you mix that up properly to, so that you get a good mix of all of the elements when you apply them onto your project and you'll see there that I just had a little bit of excess powder on the side of my card so another thing that I do when I'm embossing is I keep a dry paintbrush and uh, with a little chiseled tip to one side and if I get any embossing powder anywhere I don't want it, I can use that chisel tip just to brush that away before I actually heat set it. So I'm loving how the project is looking. It's got an art deco kind of abstract, really bright vibe to me. And I thought it would really pop even more if it just had a very thin black matte around the edge. So that's what I'm doing now. I've just applied it some Concord and 9th black cardstock, which I'm trimming down with my Tim Holtz um, guillotine. By the way, if you are not catching the names of any of the products um, that I'm using as I go along, I'll list everything below in the description. And also there'll be an accompanying blog that goes with this video and all the details will be over there as well. So I'm just adding my card panel now onto an A2 card base, taking care to line it up properly so I've got a nice even white border all around the edge. And it's time to apply my sentiment. So I wanted something that went with the kind of graphic, bold vibe of the card. And this set from Concord and Ninth was what sprung to mind. It's actually one of their turnabout sets called the Happy Rays Turnabout Stamp Set. So I'm just having a look to see which sentiment I think will fit best here. And I've decided to go for the circular one that says, so nice to know you. I'm just stamping that down onto some scrap um, cardstock with some MFT Extreme Black ink. The reason I'm doing it so many times here is to make sure I get a nice crisp impression, but also I want the image to be quite juicy because what I'm going to do now is actually apply some clear gloss on the top and heat set that so it's really nice and shiny. So that's another top tip really, is that if you don't have every embossing powder color under the sun, 
you can always stamp something in the coloured ink that you want it to be and then you can add clear and clear embossing powder over the top to give it that shine. I don't actually have any coordinating um, dies for this set so I'm just grabbing my additional circles uh, nesting dies from Waffle Flower. They always seem to have a circle of just the right size whenever I need something and this one I think fits just perfectly. So I'm going to grab some washi tape, adhere that to my stamp sentiment and then I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. I use a Gemini mini die cutting machine and I actually try and die cut as much stuff on my desktop as possible because it saves me the palaver of having to go to the other side of my room <laughs> to use my big die cutting machine. Not that I've got a very big craft room at all but uh, there you go, maybe I'm just lazy. So I love how this is looking but I've noticed there's just a little bit of a white edge along one side so I've grabbed my black glaze pen and I'm just scribbling around the outside um, just to get rid of any, of any of those white bits. The good thing about this glaze pen is that it's really shiny so it actually goes well with the embossing and you can't really tell that it's there it's pretty seamless so I'm just popping some foam tape onto the back of the sentiment now and I'm going to add that to my card front just checking that the card opens the right way because let's face it we've all done that haven't we <laughs> we've all made a card front and then taped it onto our card base the wrong way and so on so always keen to avoid that happening and now just to finish it off I thought it would look nice with a few little gems or sequins so I'm just using this uh, raindrop mix by uh, Little Things by Lucy and I don't know if you saw it on Instagram recently but she's actually just closing down her store now which is so sad because that's where I get pretty much all of my sequin mixes from so if you've got any recommendations for good places to get sequin mixes please do pop them in the comments because I'm going to be looking for a new place to get them from now on. Okay so that finishes up my first card but I just wanted to show you another one that I've made off screen. This is another way of using your embossing powders with an embossed panel and on this one I actually embossed the panel first so I ran it through my die cutting machine and then I applied my embossing ink to the raised surface so similar to what I did before with the folder I just lightly swiped the pad across the embossed surface and then I added my embossing powder to it afterwards. Okay, so I've got another couple of card examples to show you today just so you can stretch those supplies a little bit more and this is another way of using your embossing powders with your embossing folders. So with the previous two card examples we applied our embossing ink to the raised part of the embossing folder. This time we're going to be applying it to the background element. So I've swiped my ink pad over the side where the stones are actually debossed. So that embossing ink is just going to be going on to the part that is actually the background of the image. So I have dusted a, a piece of cardstock with some anti-static powder and then pop that into my embossing folder, run it through my die cut exactly the same as last time. And now I'm going to be adding my embossing powder. And you'll see here that instead of sticking to the stones, which are the protruding part of the panel, they're actually sticking to the background. So that is where our embossing ink um, has been applied this time. The embossing powder that I'm using this time is called Sea Salt. And I absolutely love this powder. It's so beautiful. It's a lovely blue, but it's got flecks of gold in it. And when it, it's heat set, it just looks stunning. So I'm popping a bit more powder on to this end where it didn't quite catch properly the first time, which is absolutely fine. Never be afraid to, to go over it two or three times if you need to. And then I'm just going to emboss that with my heat tool. So I've got this on the second setting. So the WOW heat tools have got two settings. 
One is a lower kind of intensity and the second setting is the really super hot. It heats up really fast and it melts that embossing powder really quickly. So that's what I use for most of my embossing. I really, really love how this is looking. To me, it looks like wa waves kind of lapping over some pebbles on a seashore. And so I've decided to grab my pebble colored ink from Concord and Ninth and just swipe that over the stones to kind of enhance that effect. And I just really love how that's turned out. I think the sea salt embossing powder with that stepping stone embossing folder is a really, really good match. But I just want to show you another one again that I've done off camera. And this one, I decided to leave the stepping stones white and give a really clean finish. So I'm gonna show you now how I use those two background panels to turn them into finished cards. So for the first one, I have used a set by uh, Clearly Besotted. It's an older set called Fairy Tale Mermaid. And I thought, because she sat on a stone here, I thought it just went really well with that kind of pebbly, watery background. So I've coloured it in in Copic markers, um, which coordinate with the background colours. And then I've used a die set from Spellbinders to cut that oval frame. And I've applied embossing ink around the edges of that and I've heat set it in gold embossing powder. Then I've stamped the sentiments and I've done it in the same gold uh, to match the frame um, and I really like how that one's turned out. I think the gold in the frame really picks out the gold in that sea salt embossing powder. And for my second card I've used um, a stamp set from MFT Stamps called You Keep Me Afloat. I've popped my panel onto a card base and then I've added some white cardstock across the top. And then I have added with foam tape my image, which I have stamped, coloured and um, cut with my um, brother scan and cut machine. Then I've just finished it off with a sentiment strip underneath. Again, I stamped it with the same gold embossing powder as on the other card because I think it picks out the gold in that sea salt powder really nicely. And then I've just added that on underneath. So that finishes up my cards for today. I really hope you like them. I hope you'll give the technique a try. Why don't you drop me a comment below and let me know which of the card samples is your favorite. I just love that one technique and just one embossing folder can be used to make cards that look so different. So you've got your critter cards, if you like, on one side, and then you've got something which involves more die cutting and is kind of more abstract on the other side. So whatever is your go-to style, hopefully this is a technique which you can apply um, to your card making. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please do hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to get some more inspiration from our amazing design team. And also, if you'd like to hop over to my YouTube channel, I'm Card Days Night on here and I've got plenty more examples of colouring tutorials um, and other techniques. So I hope to see you there. Thanks again so much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Bye.